We are living in a very rare time right now, which the state of the economy has opened the doors for massive opportunity for investors or aspiring investors to become insanely wealthy. Typically, recessions open up a two to three year window for investors of real estate, crypto, the stock market uh, to double their portfolios and really skyrocket their wealth. With this being a real estate investing channel, I'd like to use this opportunity to give you three ways that you can use real estate to get rich during this recession. By the way, I do have a free course that teaches all of this in great detail, very proud of it. It's chock full of really, really good stuff from scripts to contracts to marketing templates, really A to Z. It's free. If at any point you have interest uh, during this video, check the link in the description and take me up on my free offer. I promise you, you'll be happy with that. So the three ways that can make you rich during the recession or during a recession are number one, terms investing. Terms in my world are considered creative financing, non-traditional deals. Terms deals are when a seller is willing to work with you to essentially accept payments toward the purchase of their property. So whereas a traditional deal is a seller lists the property, they get a buyer that either is paying cash if you're an investor or getting a mortgage if you're the typical owner occupant uh, and they get paid off and they go on their merry way. In this case, they're kind of acting like the bank because they're the ones that are going to be accepting payments from you. Uh, terms deals during a recession are very prevalent and even more so, uh, which is kind of the unfortunate part of a recession because people lose their jobs. Uh, sometimes inflation can be a killer. Uh, many times housing markets will lead the way in recessions. In fact, one of the things I've shared with several people in my circle recently is every recession since World War II has started or led with housing as kind of the initial indicator. So uh, that is obviously kind of taking place right now. Uh, whether you think we're in a recession or not, that, that's really relevant to this video and the timing of when you're watching it. But at the end of the day, there are always opportunities when you have recessions or negative growth quarters and certainly when housing is kind of up in the air as it is right now. Terms deals become more prevalent when somebody loses their job, they can't afford their mortgage uh, and they're looking for somebody to bail them out, someone to take over their payments, someone to give them a reprieve. That's where investors like myself and hopefully you someday uh, come into play. Uh, in some cases, if the recession is really bad, such as the 2008 and values plummet, uh, the mortgage balances, so what a seller owes the bank in some cases in 2008, in many cases, uh, was more than the house was worth. So what the seller owed the bank was here and what the value of the house that they sold today was would be here. Simple math. If the seller owed hundred thousand to the bank and there was a recession and a big dip in the housing values in the housing market uh, and they only could sell it for eighty thousand dollars and they owe the bank one hundred thousand there's a twenty thousand dollar negative uh, cash flow or negative underwater situation they're over leveraged they owe more than the property's worth Believe it or not, in deals like that, when the seller is underwater, they owe more than the house is worth, terms deals can make a lot of sense because you can take over payments. You have the benefit of the housing market correcting itself over the past 100 years. It's always gone up. Oh, it's not linear. There's some ups and downs in that graph, but over 100 years of being tracked, the real estate market is uh, worth a lot more than it was 100 years ago. So historically, it's always going to appreciate when you have the benefit of time. So there's a lot of opportunities for terms deals the biggest thing I want to tell you about terms deals, the biggest appeal for folks like you and myself is that in terms deals, you really don't need any cash. You also don't need any credit. So if you don't have a lot of cash and your credit's in the crapper, guess what? Terms deals are a pretty good opportunity for you because you don't need either of those. You need the knowledge, knowing what to say, knowing the types of deals that are out there uh, and what to look for, how to find them, and ultimately how to put them under contract. Again, I teach you all this in my free course, uh, but these deals uh, really can be prevalent in situations like the recession and any recession forthcoming. So when you don't have any cash in the deal, you don't have any credit on the line, no personal guarantees, we don't sign personally, we don't put your personal credit on the line in these types of deals. Uh, you really have an infinite return. Uh, some examples of terms deals, lease options, one of my favorites. Um, owner financing. In fact, we just purchased a four unit apartment building uh, in a great area of town with owner financing, which means the owner who was free and clear sold it to us, gave us the deed to the property. We now make payments to him for the next 30 years. We never have to go to a bank. He never pulled credit, uh, didn't have to put any of our own cash into the deal. And now we've got a cash flowing four unit all because of terms and the term situation, no cash, no credit. So they're really great deals. They're in every city around the country right now. I want you to know that. So wherever you're watching this from, there are terms deals in your backyard. A recession 
is going to present more of these opportunities for you. And again, when you don't have a big uh, pot of money to start with, terms deals are a great place to start. In fact, I can tell you three people off the top of my head I've talked to in the past week who got their start in real estate using terms deals, using no cash, no credit, because they didn't have cash or credit at the time. If that connects with you, terms deals are what you should be looking for. In fact, uh, I was just sharing with uh, Andrew behind the camera, just this week alone, we've had three situations that we've looked at houses where the seller didn't have the money to fix up the property. They owed enough on it. They weren't underwater, but they didn't have a ton of room, a ton of equity, uh, and they didn't have the capital to fix it up. So we come into play. We put the money to fix it up. We then create the equity or, or create the value and we sell it at a higher profit, right? Those are great situations and uh, for us, obviously not necessarily for the seller, but they are opportunities that are out there. So terms deals is really the backbone of my company, Little Pink House of America. You see I've got a pink wall over here. Uh, pink is our favorite color, but my company specializes in terms deals, creative financing, non-traditional. That is really the backbone of what we do. When you know terms deals, when you know what to look for, uh, when you know that there's the potential for five different profits in every one deal that you do when you're doing these no cash no credit deals uh, and you don't have a good a big starting point with money or great credit uh, these are really really a great place for you to start so recessions only going to present more of these terms opportunities so that's the first one the second one is fixing and flipping HGTV specials right so fix and flips are great that's a huge part of my background I've done a ton of those uh, and I love them now there are some variations when it comes to fix and flip because when you're buying a property or when you're putting money into a property, I should say, you always should be taking the title. And let me define what that means. If you're doing a terms deal where you are buying the house uh, with a lease and option, uh, you don't have the actual physical title. So one of the things that I always teach people is you don't ever put work or big work into a property you don't have the deed to. So when you're doing a fix and flip, you are taking title to the property and you are putting money into it, you are again creating that extra value, that equity, and then selling it at what hopefully is a beautiful profit. You can make a lot of money with fix and flips. You do need private money in most cases. So uh, you can use bank loans. There are certain lenders that specialize in investment properties where they will lend you uh, a portion or a very large portion of the purchase. And in some cases, all of the renovation cost, you still have to come out of pocket with typically 10 to 20% in these types of loans. That's okay, but it's still a pretty big cash call for a lot of people. When you know how to find private money, which is really a huge key to the door, you can purchase these fix and flips, you can have the ability to make cash offers, which are going to help you get those deals. Again, how does this benefit or how does this ultimately become more prevalent in a recession? It's a great question. You have people that, again, same reasons for the terms deals, but you have people that are losing their jobs, people that cannot continue to afford the payments, uh, people that may have adjustable rate mortgages where the payments are going to increase, they can't afford those. There may be repairs on the property that they can't afford to fix. Uh, they may have to move. Uh, we're negotiating on a property right now where dad died the two heirs sisters lived in different parts of the country dad didn't touch the property probably 40 years uh, you can see the original paint on the property uh, on the inside and he was a smoker as well so when you get through all the yellow on the walls you can see that he uh, hasn't touched it in a long time the sisters don't want it and ultimately it's a property that we're going to be able to increase value by going in there and doing the repairs you can do the same again fix and flips are going to have opportunities for you to make good buys today probably better buys than you could have made in the past year or two when the market was just going crazy. So there's going to be more opportunities for you to purchase these properties, traditionally buying them for cash, fixing them, flipping them for a great profit. Now, let me give you one variation uh, when it comes to a recession. Uh, you buy this property. You make a good buy. It's imperative you make a good buy. We buy low we sell high. If you don't make a good buy, you can do everything else in the process right. You can renovate it the right way. You can have a great sale, a great buy, or a great price on the property. But if you don't buy it right, all of that stuff doesn't matter. If you don't buy it right, the rest doesn't matter. If you pay too much, you're not going to make a profit or you're going to make a much lesser profit. So you have to make a great buy. But let's say during a recession, you find this great buy and in the recession, values in real estate plummet. There's no indication that that's going to be the case today where it's going to be so drastic like 2008, but it certainly could happen. Anything's possible. So all of a sudden you are in the middle of this fix and flip or you finished it and now the value that you thought you could resell it at has dropped. The beautiful thing about real estate is you have the ability to generate 
an income or a revenue stream from the asset or the property. So every month that you have a payment to a lender on your property, you have income that offsets the outgo. You have the potential to generate a cash flow, not just a cash revenue to offset any debt. Hopefully you're making a couple hundred dollars a month free and clear. But the beauty of knowing what to do should values drop uh, is going to be the key to the door. What if you held on to that property and rented it out for two or three years until values got back to where you intended them for be, right? Intended them for them to be, excuse me. So there are ways that you can always pivot should things happen uh, to you in a recession. And again, the knowledge is a really a key point. But if you're a fix and flipper, you want to do this, you ultimately like to, to sell the property, you could always buy it, renovate it, rent it for a period of time until the market comes back. Uh, there are also some, some capital gains benefits when you own a property for more than 12 months in a day. Uh, you can actually cut your short-term capital gain in more than half to a long-term capital gain by simply having it for more than a 12-month window. So a little more detail there. A lot of this is in the course that I give you for free in the link in this description. So again, fix and flips, uh, you can make a lot of money. And I've got to tell you, we're looking at deals right now. Uh, right now, today, in fact, we put 200 contract this week already. The spreads are 100 grand. Guys, I've done this 26 years. $100,000 spreads are not the norm when you're fixing and flipping. Oh, if you're dealing with multi million dollar properties or even, you know, several hundred thousand, you know, 800 to a million, you make that kind of money. It's probably a little bit more realistic, but you also have to lay a lot of capital out to get there. We're talking about making a $100,000 profit on two and $300,000 homes. There are opportunities already today presenting themselves that I didn't see quite literally 30, 60, 90 days ago. So being ready for what's about to happen, what's coming, what's already here is really, really important. So the first one is terms. The second one is buy and hold, excuse me, fix and flip. The third one is going to be buy and hold. And as I say, in many cases, arguably my favorite, arguably the most important. And here's why. When you buy a rental property, you can buy a property of any sort. If you're living there and you're going to move, I always tell people, never sell the property. My brother-in-law, my family, my friends uh, I've talked to recently, uh, they've had properties that they've just had. They lived in them at one time, are moving, may have rented it, now thinking about selling it. Market's good. My advice is always, don't sell. You will thank me 20 years down the road. The beauty of buy and holds in a recession, which is kind of the premise of this video, is that you can get better buys. Again, there are opportunities right now for you to purchase a property at a discounted value or discounted cost, and you can then still fix it up. So you're kind of increasing that value, increasing equity by doing some repairs. Uh, but instead of selling it, you still have a low cost basis. Now you are able to rent it out and ultimately cash flow. There's a strategy called BRRRR, uh, buy, uh, rehab, rent, refinance. It's a good strategy. Uh, I saw something the other day that said a BRRRR made him almost BRRRROKE uh, because there are some holes that you can poke in it because you do have to come out of pocket. You're renovating a property really just to make a couple hundred dollar a month cash flow, uh, which is great. The play in BRRRR is really more for the long term. For owning it 10, 15, 20 years and beyond. So if you can achieve that same without having to go through all the out-of-pocket costs, there are some inherent benefits in that. So bottom line, buy and holds can make you retire a multimillionaire. In fact, uh, one of the things that we talk about here is our teacher plan, where you can be a millionaire even as a teacher if you buy one rental property a year over the next 10 years and you have now 10 properties, if they're $100,000 each, today you have a million dollar portfolio that's probably gonna be worth $3 million in the next 30 years. That's gonna cash flow tens of thousand dollars a month once you've got them paid off free and clear. And again, building a portfolio for the long term is just key. I love fix and flips. I love terms deals. In some terms deals like subject twos, which is kind of like a unicorn. Uh, it's a specialization of ours here. Subject twos you can keep for many, many years, but fix and flips you're selling. And in many terms deals, you ultimately have an exit strategy at some point in time. You're gonna sell it within a 12 to 24, 36 month period. When you buy, rent, and hold, you don't have to go recreate the wheel. People that establish a rental portfolio, even if it's over a period of many years, ultimately retire wealthy because they were able to have this asset class, real estate, that spits out money every single month. So hopefully you got some value in those three examples. Again, the details really lie in the course, and I've got contract scripts, where to find these deals, what to say. Feel free to take me up on that. 
Most important thing I want to share with you is this. I said this earlier in the video. I'm going to conclude with this. Uh, ever since World War II, every recession subsequent to World War II has been led by housing. Housing was the initial indicator of negative growth. Every recession since World War II has always been followed by huge growth and huge opportunity. So what you do now can and will set you up for many, many years to come. And I've got to say this quote one more time because it's resonating with me. I say it in many of the other videos. Uh, one of our favorite quotes around here is, when do you plant a tree? When's the best time to plant a tree? Well, the great answer is 30 years ago. Well, we can't go back 30 years. So when is the next best time to plant a tree? The answer is today. Take advantage of this course. Take advantage of the recession. Get in the game. Change your financial picture, your financial future, your financial freedom forever.